Let me show you how we build the robot with the pressure gauge. So we'll start from the beginning. Okay, but this is going to look a bit disorganized because this is not how I build it. I build um, pressure gauges in one, you know, I'll do 20 bodies at one time, for example. So this is a bit disjointed, okay? So we'll build one robot from start to finish. Okay, so the first thing we do is unwrap the body and the base plate. Okay. First thing we'll do is um, a quick QC of the of the paint. Make sure there's no mega um, chips or anything. Green is pretty good um, for for reject rate. I mean, these have already been QC'd by the factory, but uh, and then another QC team. But this is ours, which is a bit more strict. So what I'm doing, I'm just looking for defects in the light. Um, any major defects. But because it's powder coat, powder coating is an industrial paint and you're never going to get the same finish as, as like a, an automotive two-pack paint. Okay, uh, again with the, the main body, I'm looking for defects. These I know are just handling marks, so they'll rub out. Um, the other thing I need to do is sand the inside here because it's been sandblasted there is some overspray of the sandblaster and it's a bit rough so the piston won't go in and out so that needs to be sanded and I do those in lots of like 20 before we get to this stage so my first job is a quick look for powder coat defect any big ones yeah um, this would have been used okay so this black mark here, I know that's a handling scratch. So for those sort of ones, I'll polish them out now. Yeah. So I know that's uh, just a deep handling mark, so that will polish out with some buffing compound. Yeah. If they're really bad, for example, I'll go around and I'll mark the spot. And then what I'll do, I'll... Um, flat them down with some 800 grit and then go to 1200, 1500 and 2000 smooth out any major defects and then I'll buff it afterwards and then we put a wax on it just to try and get it presentable okay so that's a bit of a pain but you know in the end it's worth it right so we're assuming assuming this is the one we're going to use this is a reject obviously so what we would do I've got my custom jig there, which holds it in place. So we'll fix the base. So this is a five millimeter Allen key. Yeah. So that'll screw in. I've already checked these uh, in a, it, the same time that I checked the inside to sand it. I've already checked these threads to make sure there's no powder coat or dirt in there. Uh, if need be, I'll, I'll re-tap the hole, yeah, okay, so we'll just screw that in, you don't need to go too crazy with any of the parts, if you can hear banging, it's our lovely neighbour, drilling, so at this point, uh, I'll put the, the label on, yeah, so it will be, I'll just do it by eye, Something like that, yeah. If it's not straight, I'll take it off again. Okay, so that's the main body done like that. So the next thing I would do would be the arms. So these have been checked already by us, yeah. But I'll do it again, okay. So this is cast stainless steel, okay. So what I'll do. First thing I'll do is make sure the screws are in the right place because the stainless steel company will um, polish with the screws in. So I want to make sure they're in the right place. So these ones are correct. So what I'm doing now is I want to remove the plate so that we can add some thread lock. Yep. Again, I'll just check that. 
Okay, these two are in the wrong place, so I'll swap them over. Actually, to be honest, you should never use these the, the ball end for any kind of, um, you know, if it's really tight or, or you want to tighten it up, always use this end because the ball end is pretty delicate and that will snap or probably strip. Right, so, so what I'll do now is add a dab of uh, Loctite to the thing, just a little tiny bit. So what I'm doing is just locking these screws in place. Um, this is meant to be a permanent Loctite, but I've found, because I haven't used an activator and cleaned out the threads, you can still adjust it a day or two later. Okay, so I'll wipe off that. So now what I'm doing is making sure this is free. Yeah. As I'm setting them now, I'm going to say that that's a bit too loose, yeah? I'm trying to get it so that when you lift it up, when it gets to this position here, there'll be a bit of resistance. There's actually a taper here so that it will grab it when it gets to there. So what I'm doing, just doing this by feel, yeah? So that's a bit stiff now, yeah? So I'm just backing it off, yeah, and that's what I want, sort of, yeah? You don't want it too loose, okay? So I'm wiping off the glue on the thread lock again for this. So what I'd normally do, I'd normally do about 10 arms at once. Yeah, just put a bit dab there. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, that's too loose, I don't want that. Yeah. I mean, if you ever find it's a bit too loose or a bit too, you can always adjust these screws. It does give you a bit of adjustment. Just make sure that, be aware that there was thread lock. And if, it's, if the screw's not gonna move, it's not gonna move without some heat to break the bond. Okay. So just there. Yeah, that's the way I want it. So, yeah, there. So I'm just doing this by feel. There we go. That's exactly what I want now. Alright, so now the fun part. So the top pin goes in. So now I'm using a selection of uh, these Teflon discs. We've got two different thicknesses to cater for the powder coat variants. Okay. Thick one in the middle. Okay, making sure I don't bang that. Cute. Nice noise. Okay, so this is the tricky bit. Okay, I'm trying. Okay, so I'm looking at this and I could see I could probably squeeze the thicker one in. Yeah. He's in. Cut a bit of Teflon. Right. So the idea of the, the these Teflon discs is just to prevent the the stainless steel rubbing against each other, and of course to take up some room. I don't want these to be too precise. Yeah. There has to be a bit of movement. This here is just finger tight. That's all you need to do. That's not going anywhere. Right. Then I'll leave him there in my little. His little house piston. So again, I would normally make a batch of 20 of these at a time. Right, straight fitting. Um, so originally this was going to be permanently locked in place. Um, however, people expressed a desire that they can take it in and out and plug it up or whatever. So, so right now, uh, I'm not relying on the O-ring because uh, the O-ring will seal it but it won't hold it in place um, so I'm just going to use some Teflon string to seal and stop 
stop it moving. I should remove the O-ring, but it's a right pain. Okay, that threads in nicely. To our piston, hopefully. There we go. So I'm trying to get it so just flush there. Get rid of the string. Right, that's done. Now we'll take our tube. So these have all been cut to length already. Yeah. We just push it in. That's all we need to do, push fit. So I'm trying to get it so the natural curve is there. We'll feed it through. Now this is the uh, tricky part. So I'm trying to line up these holes. Yeah. You can use some books or something if you ever take this apart. Yeah. This is tricky because I can't see it. There we go. Yeah. Little wiggle, there it is. So that's in. Now we just tighten this up. Again, you really don't need to go too mad with this. Yeah, these are not really going anywhere, right? So now we've got our tube sticking out. So now it's time to build the gauge. Okay, uh, ah, the gauge is okay. Oh dear. Here we go. These are our gauges. I polished yesterday. It's got a chrome bezel, so I just polished it yesterday. Get them all clean. So I get that. These are the fittings that go on the back. Yeah. These have been uh, cleaned in our deburring machine. It's a ma uh, we call it a magnetic uh, deburring machine. So that will remove any burrs or swarf or oil from the fitting. So that's a custom CNC part. So, right, so what I'll do now is I'll just dab some retaining compound from Loctite again. Because I just want that gauge to, to stop moving. Yeah, it's just touching the... the Now, if it does, yeah. So I just want that gauge to be fixed in there to stop it moving. We'll add some of our Loctite food safe. Okay. So now, by eye, I know that's roughly because it's sort of the logo has to be up past the horizontal. And then I'll just visually, yeah, that's level. And then I'll just snug the back. So that's done. Yeah. Filter screen. This pops in there. Okay. The back fitting goes in. Right, hand finger tight, that's all you need to do. You don't need to go crazy. Now, uh, this bit's a little bit tricky. So now I need to line up the gauge. Right, okay, so I put that there. Taking care not to scratch anything. So that's at the top position and then the gauge sits just there. Now we add the, this is a nut, I didn't put my nuts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rub screws would help, yeah. Yeah, so we added a nylon um, shim at the back. Some people, again, said they would like the option of removing the pressure gauge. So, so we've added nylon shim, uh, which means that you can uh, remove it, or th these grub screws will not scratch. Okay, so I'm holding it there. That goes in there, it's a bit fiddly. The nylon shim goes in. Okay. 
Mm. This can be snugged up quite tight because the uh, actually that little tiny piece of nylon does a good job. Right, and now I'll bring the down, taking care with that, not to get it trapped. Right, this is a bit tricky, so I'm going to do it with my left hand, right? So this goes in there, and what I'm trying to do here is just make a, a nice gentle bend, push it in, yep, there we go, it's popped in place. So I'm trying to get a nice bend there to try and mould it, yeah? But the natural curve of the pipe sort of helped. So now I'm looking at it to make sure that's level. The arms can go up. Yeah. It's not touching the bracket. And also that the pipe has got a bit of slack in it. Yeah. So that is good. Yeah. So of, of course this pipe, you could look at it as a consumable item because it is, you know, moving up and down or whatever. Right. So that is done now normally at this point of course normally I wear uh, those blue nitrile gloves to put on the silicon grease on this but for the benefit of the video I'm too lazy no. actually I will put the gloves on because I hate that grease in my hand it's awful stuff one sec okay right yeah, that silicon grease on your fingers feels oof. So, so we'll just add a bit now at this stage because I just want to make sure that the it's in the right place. Yeah, there you go. That's all it is. And then I'll just rub my fingers around to make sure it's seated in place. Yeah, with my clean glove, of course. Right, testing. Now we come to test. So, what I'll do is put our mat there to protect it. You can use it whichever way you want. I really, obviously, I designed it that way to match the ribs, but whatever, up to you really. All it does is protect the powder coating from the scratchy cups. So, I prepared a clean jug of water. So I add it there, leaving our five to eight millimeter gap. We pop it in. At this point, yeah, drop out. So what I'm looking here is to make sure a the gauge works, yeah, which it does. And I'm listening for any leaks, yeah. If I was in a different position, normally I get over it and I'll try and push it up to 12, 14 bar. To, to as an experiment because I want to test it obviously so what I'm doing now I'm listening for that last hiss hopefully ok there it is right so with that hiss I'm assuming that the piston has been able to pump all of the water in the air and that there are no leaks here and here and to double check I will look down there with a torch to make sure there's no water inside the piston and then I'll do another shot to test it again and that's how we test it. So now I know that the pressure gauge, uh, what I, yeah, and then to test the pressure gauge I'll use our bathroom scales, okay, there's some junk from Ikea which I do upside down otherwise you can't see it. So. Now you see the benefit of having it stick at the top, yeah, because you want the arms to sort of, if they're too loose, you wouldn't be able to do that, okay? So what I'm doing, do another shot, okay. So that's eight bar and it's registering 27 bar, 20 kilos, yeah. Yeah. So for people without the pressure gauge, what you can use is bathroom scales, and then you'll understand the force you need to get up around six to eight bar, which is about 18 kilograms, yeah. Uh, so the operating pressure of our robot, we're sort of recommending anywhere between five 
to eight for your coffee, yeah? Um, the tube is up to 20 bars, no problem. But you've got to remember, this is basically, essentially a toy, yeah? So, I'm, I'm saying that the, the, the best coffee in the operating range would be sort of five to eight, maybe five to seven, and the drilling starts. So you don't need to go completely crazy with this. I know, I know it's fun, but there's no need and you might break something, right? So we've tested that a couple of times. So, yeah, the drilling starts and then, so essentially that's my job done. Then I'll hand it over to Crystal who will do all the final cleaning. Obviously you've got to get my fingerprints off here and then she'll clean the piston, um, of course with water and then we use alcohol to sterilize it um, yeah everything's clean and crystal will also do a final inspection you know for for things that I've missed um, yeah and that's it and then the aluminium greens easy aluminium actually for me it's a bit easier because this has got the finish from the die casting and then, so, this will then get a final polish by me. Yeah. So that's what we do. Maybe we'll show you something later of how to polish this. Yeah. All right. Okay, another bit of the video. So these are the ones that I've just uh, built, tested. So like I said, they come over here where we'll pack the all the other items, we've got tampers, these are the porta filters. So what we'll do here, we'll assemble the, the spout into the porta filter and the porta filter and then we'll check that the baskets fit obviously. I mean there is actually, this is a deep draw item so there is a bit of, bit of tolerance but nothing to worry about. Then we'll check that each porta filter fits in the machine, we'll check that each spout oh that sorry the screen can go in yeah and again these are all cleaned before we put them in and that's it and then we check the spare parts little checklist to sh show what goes in it's so complicated yeah the mat sealed up yeah so every single item that is in your box has been checked and QC'd and put into your robot to make sure it all fits.